Good morning and welcome back to the latest edition of the Invest Stock Market Analysis for the week ending April 21st, 2023. Appreciate you all tuning in and subscribing to this channel as well as our podcast, Invest Talk. I am host Justin Klein, and today I am going to title my video The Calm Before the Policy Storm. The Policy Storm, and that is on both fronts, both monetary and fiscal, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Uh, but this week was uh, pretty quiet overall. You had some economic data. Here's the Fed Business Leader Survey. Uh, the what six seventh month in a row it's been negative. The building permits that those were down eight point eight percent month over month. Housing starts were negative for what's this the sixth out of the last seventh month. Uh, existing home sales down two percent. Kind of same thing here. Uh, initial jobless claims ticked up. So you're seeing the economic environment uh, clearly weaken, continue to weaken. Not drastically. This isn't, you know, 08 or anything like that. But uh, clearly the banking crisis and, and just the lagged effect of uh, tighten, tightening policy has um, fed into the economic uh, numbers. And you can see this with the high yield option adjustment spread. It's something I'm continuing to watch. Is this going to break out? This is a longer term chart going back to 2018. And you can see this COVID crisis breakup got to very low levels. So this is the spread above treasuries. Here um, in September, you know, the fall of 2021, it was extremely low, and then it perked up in the in the summer of last year, and then uh, has kind of kind of consolidated sideways. And so, this is typically what we call a bullish consolidation, meaning it's just in an uptrend in a consolidation period before that next move higher. Uh, it's just a matter of when. Now. The market is expecting the Fed, it's not next week, but the week after will be if the next Fed meeting, and it comes up quick, 89% uh, chance of a 25 basis point hike, which is pretty interesting considering uh, you know, the last time there was a Fed meeting, there was a midst of a banking crisis, um, and they've pivoted uh, once again a bit behind the scenes, but you can see June, it's a 68% chance of a pause. So the market's kind of pricing in a hike and a pause. We'll see if they do that. If the market kind of continues to float, I think they have... Uh, reason to continue to raise rates, but also on the flip side, you have inflation data, economic data that continues to really course correct, and and uh, we're back by mid year. We're going to be back into uh, a very sluggish inflationary environment and an even more sluggish economic environment. So I think that's what kind of the market is pricing in. And then obviously you have the debt ceiling going forward. Um, you know the amount of money that was raised by uh, tax season was a lot less than expected for various reasons, but um, that's gonna push the debt ceiling talk uh, up a little bit. And uh, I've said that, you know, that's can, can be a storm, but there could be um, some more liquidity pulled out of the system once the Fed, or once the government raises that debt limit and they start to borrow again, pulling liquidity out of the system, something definitely to continue to watch for. Let's uh, pivot over to the charts here. The Dollar remains kind of in a downtrend. This is something I'm watching. This is a, generally a positive when the dollar is in a downtrend. Despite the Fed looking uh, to hike, uh, the dollar remains in a downtrend. Uh, the move index, that is, uh, continues right around the 120 level. Perfectly fine there in the treasury market right now. The S&P overall, it was really a grind sideways this week. Overall, mini bullish consolidation right from the breakup last, uh, was that Thursday? Consolidation sideways. Uh, since then, and that's gaining power most likely for the next move. And and, and what I th see is it's pr it looks like it wants to attack this 618 rechase from the highs right around 4300. And I think that's very, very possible in the near term. NYSE, same kind of thing, obviously broader index, but consolidating above that 200 day moving or 100 day moving average, all the major moving averages really. Um, so that looks uh, looks positive. Let's go check in on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, kind of same thing, right? Just consolidating right at resistance, this previous pivot point, looking like it wants to head a bit higher. Uh, let's look at growth to value. That's always interesting. And that's pulled back, but kind of consolidated. And if this looks this looks like it wants to continue to the upside, this is bullish consolidation, bullish pullback. Um, so you could see uh, reassertion of that, that move higher in the uh, the tech stocks and the growth stocks, at least in the near term, and obviously the indices broadly are overweight that part of the market. Uh, the 10-year 
has picked up here around three and a half. Overall, you're in this trading range. Really nothing to see here either way. Kind of boring. The VIX, uh, this is uh, just continues to grind lower. That's obviously positive for risk assets. There is some issues with kind of zero dated options and, and there's a lot of volume there and that's creating some distortion here in the VIX. So you don't want to take too much out of that at the current time. The commercial mortgage-backed security market that has bounced back a little bit, but also I'm waiting to see if this breaks down, if there are any credit events on that side, and that's where it, uh, that's where you're likely to see uh, more problems. The KBE, the um, this is the banking index, kind of consolidated sideways, and overall that's not good. It hasn't really gotten much of a bounce back. It's stabilized, but stabilized in a downtrend is not necessarily a great thing. Uh, you saw the dollar was in a downtrend. Gold did have a pullback uh, this uh, this week or really consolidation once again uh, moving higher usually you're, you're going to see this <clears throat> pull back more in earnest if you're going to get some sort of bigger risk off event but you're not seeing that as of yet and the gdx same thing kind of pullback um, was overbought and having a modest pullback is no real issue the silver to gold ratio let me pull this up silver to gold ratio remains in an uptrend just consolidating sideways uh, that's fine as well. Now, energy that had a uh, consolidation week once again. Uh, you're, that's what you're seeing here. It just that's kind of the theme here. Consolidation. I should probably maybe title this video consolidation because <laughs> that's really all you saw. And when you see consolidation after an up move, that's once again gaining power uh, to move higher. Now, I do think you see a credit event later in the year. Like I said. You know, if you look at this, here's the SHYG to SHY, so short-term junk bonds. This is in a downtrend, right? Now, it's stabilized since the July low. Um, and as long as you see liquidity dynamics remain fine, this is probably going to uh, be fine uh, overall. Uh, and, and that's modestly positive risk assets, the fact that this is not in, uh, not continuing its downtrend. Now, you zoom out, let's go to a monthly, <clears throat> right, so to see this big wide ranging bar, I'll teach you a little technicals here. Wide ranging bar, closed, open here, closed here. You're just consolidating within that bar. And as long as you stay within it, that likely means it's going to continue lower. Now, that could be many months from now, it could be six months from now, nine months from now, 10 months from now. Who knows how many months it's going to take for this to consolidate, but that is the overall signal that it's telling you. Um, so, will there be a credit event? Mid-year, late year, I think that's certainly possible and something to be uh, on the watch for. But you don't want to get too bearish too quickly, especially when you see short-term bullish consolidation. And that's what this is. This is bullish consolidation. Let me get to the daily here. <clears throat> this is bullish consolidation over the past week or two. Move up, trade sideways. Right. So... Kind of want to say white to the eyes. Um, you, you know, you don't want to miss out. You see, you'd easily rally another 10, 15% from here before you have some, some sort of credit of it. You know, I've always said the Fed doesn't, the Fed's there to backstop the Treasury, to uh, keep risk assets relatively inflated, to, to inflate the economy and market uh, to a sense where uh, overall, hopefully, over time, you're inflating away the debt. And that's ultimately what they're going to do. So they don't want some big deflationary spiral. You saw that with the COVID crisis. We saw that with the recent banking crisis. They go in there. They, they clean up the mess. They, th they throw the kitchen sink at it. Uh, damn the political ramifications. Their job is pretty clear. And you have to be aware of that and understand uh, kind of the system that we're in. Uh, and whether you like this system or hate the system, it's irrelevant. It is the system. And you have to play accordingly. So that's where we're at. Short term, modestly bullish and medium term eh, credit events probably on the horizon, but not quite yet. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. A con reminder, the contents of this video are for educational purposes only. Should not be construed as a recommendation of buyer sell security or to participate in an investment strategy. The views are my own and do not represent those of KPP Financial or those associated. Have a good weekend.